Hi everyone, it's uh, Barry from Maytar. Maytar is a small little uh, town or city near Beersheba, which is about 20 minute car ride away, which is not too far from Gaza Strip, south, south of Israel, I'm visiting a friend here. This week's Parsha is called Yitro. A Yetar is also something additional. So Yitro, why was a name given to him in the five books of Moses? Yitro was uh, Moses' um, father-in-law when he was uh, running away from Egypt because he had, he, had a, he feared for his life. He met uh, his daughter, Yitro's daughter, which later became his wife, Tzipporah. She was an Ish uh, Kushit, which translates as an Ethiopian woman. So he decided that she was a good match and he meets Yitro after the, well, there's a debate when exactly he met him, but Yitro had heard of the great miracles and the splitting of the Red Sea and uh, all the uh, what ha all the events that led M Moshe to be where he is at today. Now Yitro's father-in-law has a history. He was one of the big priests. He was the priest of that world that um, Moshe was actually born in with the Egyptians. This was the world of idol worshippers. So Yitro was the greatest idol worship of all of the uh, idol worships. He was, he was very brilliant and he understood everything. But when he heard of the miracles that happened and the wonders, he realized that this must be a god greater than all the other individual gods. They had the god of medicine, the god of love, the god of the moon god, the sun god. They had all these different gods. But Israel, the god of Israel, is a god of justice. Uh, what does it mean? That with, with inherent within nature, and Rav Shimshon Raphael Hurst says that just the in the first plague where the, the king of Egypt just, just decided to have the babies be thrown into the Nile and the Nile was the life uh, link to life in Mitzrayim God punishes the, the Egyptian with ten plagues and the first place was plague was the plague of dam or blood so here we have measure for measure with the blood of the babies being thrown into the Nile to die similarly like the babies that are in south of Gaza here south of me a little bit further down maybe 50 kilometers from where I'm speaking right now that they came into the southern border of Israel and they with a 1500 people you know, they, they, they kidnapped and they took all different aspects of family life, people who are loyal to the land and were celebrating in the, the, the greatest Jewish holiday, which is really the, the culmination of the um, effects of the Yom Kippur prayer on Simchas Torah, which means the happy this of the new we dance of the Torah. This was the day that they attacked, and it was the day that actually created a certain sense of unity between the Jews who are maybe to the left, to the right. But when war comes, when when your borders are attacked, there's no you have to respond, and there is judgment. So the judgment on Rosh Hashanah, God gives us ten days. From Yom Hashanah and Yom Kippur, but the, the the last holiday in this uh, within the month is the holiday of Sukkot, where we dwell in huts, 
and we're happy to praise God in our huts. And these people in Gaza were attacked in their huts. These people, they came over the border, and even though these there were some religious um, communities, others not so religious, but even the non-religious connect with God and the holiday and Sukkot. And even in their Sukkot, they, they, they came. So we might ask, where was the protection for the Jewish people? On the happiest day, Simchas Torah, it's also called the eighth day, the closing of the festival that started really with Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, and then it closes with Sukkot, where we lived in booths after we came out of Egypt. We went to, uh, from Sukkot, from Ramses in Egypt to Sukkot in the, in the wilderness. God said, I got you. You're protected. Now, 3,000 years later, where's the protection? What's missing here? Well, there was discussion between the left and the right in politics the previous year, and people weren't getting along. And we know in Jewish history for two, 3,000 years that when people don't get along, they're going against God in the Torah because there's five commandments for, f to address the supreme king of kings, which is God, and there's the second five commandments, which addresses you know, uh, how man reacts to his fellow man. And if there's a lack of respect, and there's, if there's a lack of, 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 of bringing godliness into our lives, then God doesn't like this. God gives bad judgment. But in the bad judgment came a reunification of all the various fractions of the Jewish community. And it created a response of unity where the army had to mobilize. And to this day, even three months later, Israel's still getting missiles from various points. And Israel has to now pave, pave the road to, to Lebanon to try to, where Hezbollah, other factions of Iran, little fake satellites, they're not really companies, they're organizations, and they're really gangsters who want to do whatever they want to do as proxies to Iran. So, you know, the Torah and the politics don't mix because Torah is the essence of the morality that Hashem wants to bring to the Jewish world. So, what is the effect of all the nations after three months of this horrendous attack and they're still holding hostages? They're screaming, oh, misplaced chesed. They're saying, it's the, the force is not proportional. It, that's not the issue here. The issue is Israel's survival. And Israel been kicked out since the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. They kicked out of every country in Europe for 2,000 years and was still here and was still surviving. So God put a balance in his Torah system for the world that the Jews would be a light upon the nations for the 70 nations. So here we go. Here we have Yisro, who is one of, from that school of 70 nations not part of the Am Kadosh, the holy nation of, of, of the land of Israel. And he's saying, Moses, Moses was a great leader. He was educated in Egyptian schools. But he said, you know, you received this Torah from Mount Sinai and you're trying to do everything yourself. Have some elders delegate your authority. So we see him like a businessman. He was an idol, idol worshiper, but he was a good businessman. He, knows, he knew how to organize. And Moshe listened to his father-in-law. Now we see a very similar parallel also in Egypt. What happened in Egypt? There was the two characters, Yosef, Yosef, right? Which also means to add. The Hosef is to add. 
and yeter means also add yosef and like yitro is an addition it's from the same root the parallel personality between yosef hatzadik like moshe rabbeinu a rabbi our tzaddik our greatest tzaddik perhaps because he was so humble and these are the values that the Jewish people, because he brought a Torah to the world to teach people not to be arrogant, but to be humble. And who was arrogant? The king of Egypt. So here, the king of Egypt, who was arrogant, uses this humble son of Yaakov, Yosef, to organize Egypt to make sure that they had food based on these dreams that Yosef was able to actualize as because he was disturbed by these dreams. And because he was able to answer Yosef, right? there's a tradition that said Yosef knew miraculously, uh, said that he knew 70 language, but Pharaoh learned 69 languages. So he knew Yosef was special because when Yosef started to speak with him in Hebrew, he didn't know it. He says, listen, we're both leaders. I'll give you my ring. You do the work. You analyze the dream appropriately. Don't tell anybody that I don't know Hebrew. Because he was king. You know, he doesn't. He's his, his, his viceroy, his subject, his vice president. He's supposed to know more than the king. But this is, this, is, this is the reality. So we have two realities here. And what is the unique thing that Yosef Hatzadik did? Not only did he save the agriculture as a personal manager, as a food manager. You know, I, I was a manager in the States of a 300 store chain called Associated Grocers many years ago. And it's not easy being a manager. So I, I left them and I came to Israel. But then when I came to Israel, I only stayed for a few years, but now I'm back. But the idea is that Yosef added to the quality of life of the whole world, just like Moshe is adding to the quality of life of the values of Torah that are important for the 70 nations. 70 nations, 70 languages, they all come from the time of Noah, where there were 70 families that came out of that. And all this whole idea is that we are one. We are one individuals. We are one with a community. And when we're not one with either or, there's chaos, there's Hamas, there's Hezbollah. There are, what, what are they, the builders? We are building a country here. I'm happy to say that yesterday I went to contract and I, I bought some land in this land of Israel. Now there's missiles here, missiles there, and the dangerous this and that. What do I care? This is God's country. I'm a Jew. This is where I belong. And I thought about the money it's going to cost. And I said, wow, what kind of faith do I have if I can't own a piece of the rock, so to speak? There was a, there was a, a uh, insurance advertisement in America, own a piece of the rock. So this is the rock. Israel is the stone. So mishalo, mishalo hachamu. So mishlo, mishlo On Shabbos we sing this song. God is the rock of Israel. He's supposed to speak to the rock. And the rock gave water. And in the merit of Moses' sister Miriam, there was water. But when she died, the water didn't come out. And God says, Moses, speak to the rock. He had his little rod with him. He was a little bit impatient. Big tzaddik like Moses. And he hit the rock. 
in the first instance in, in the Torah, he, he did hit the rock because he was told to hit the rock. But he was told by God to speak to the rock, you see? So the instructions given to, to man from God have to be very careful. Even the greatest tzaddik like a Moshe or a Yosef or a Joseph, Moses or Joseph, they all had these trials. Yosef was thrown into the pit. But he rose to the top because God wanted him to. And why didn't he hate his brothers who sold him into the pit? Because he said, because this is, God wanted me. He wanted me to be in Egypt, not only to save you Jewish people, my family of, of the 12 tribes of Yaakov, but he wanted me to save the world of Egyptians. So God's blessing is with the Jewish people. So we have to be a light unto the nations and we, the nations have to see that we are fulfilling the will of Moses from Sinai. And any Jew who wants to see this connection and been, and been uh, influenced by the media and their lies, you want to be a Jew? You learn Torah. You learn Tanakh. You learn the the, the, the writings, you learn the prophets, you learn the five books of Moses, then you learn the Talmud. And if you really want to get fancy, you do Lukute Maharan, you do Ralph Nachman, and you want to get more understanding, you learn a little bit about the Hasidim, Ali Melech, the Baal Shem Tov. We have thousands of years of tradition that look to build and to create a sense of value in this world to bring God's presence to this world through our study and, and, and review of Torah documents to make it part of our lives. The greatest commitment you can give to as a Jew is to come and establish yourself in this land. Even when there are missiles, it doesn't matter. That's faith. That's having a moon on. So, so we learn from Yitro that even in idol worship, the king of idol worshipers, in this week's Parsha, even the king of idol worships could change and, and humble himself to see that there is some greater prop, a greater God out there controlling the world. We have our choice to choose good, and the Torah says, the five books and the law says, you're nice to your fellow man, you'll get treated nice. You're not nice to your fellow man. There's judgment. That's the concept of a god. There's no, there's no god in the Egyptian arsenal there. Believe it or not, I was in Egypt when I was a student. I went during Sukkot. I went to Egypt with, with an archaeologist and a hieroglyphist. And I, when I went into the Valley of the Kings, and I saw all the hieroglyphics and all this. And it, the, the student that was explaining what they meant, I started memorizing. I'm saying, what am I doing? I'm a Jew. I don't, I don't need to know the sky is this, the sky is that. And it was like 100 degrees, and I went out into the sun, and I saw, what did I see? Hot sun, and I said, Shema Yisrael, Adoshem Eloheinu, Adoshem Echad. This is the testimony of one God in this world, and he's with the Jewish people. I realized who I was by going into the tombs of the old Egyptian kings that tried to kill Israel. So the world should know, anybody that tries to mess with Israel, they're gonna pay a price, a big price, because we're God's chosen. Whether or not we keep it or not, he still will not give up on us if there's quality and we're true to fulfilling his will, which means being good to one another, which means saving the land of Israel because we keep the values of the world in order. If the land of Israel were to be destroyed, the whole world would be destroyed. It's quite obvious we are his chosen. But it's not easy to see. You have to work at it. You have to work at your faith. You have to work at wisdom. What does it mean? 
or do. It's not empirical wisdom. It's thought, purity of thought through action, through doing. So if you're Jewish and you never lit Shabbos candles, you light tonight. Shabbos here in Mayta is in the night, two minutes, in two hours, and uh, the sun's going down. And I'm enjoying every day. And I've established my connection with the land where Moses wanted, I think he prayed 515 times to come into the land. And God says no, because he was punished because he was supposed to speak to the rock. And he hit the rock. No, we don't like to hit. We like to use our words softly for encouragement, for building and not for destroying like our enemies try to do in every generation because a Amalek is the one who attacks the Jewish people in every generation. And we know a Amalek emanates from Iran. And these, Iran is smart enough to create proxies so they're near their organizations, they're near the countries, but they, they, they're a bunch of liars. And everybody's screaming, ceasefire, this, that. Of course we want to have compassion for innocent people. Of course even those people there in Gaza are feeling the pain. And we feel the pain. Many Jews feel the, their pain. But Israel has to eradicate the disease that's affecting the whole world, even in America, now. That's why I bought land in Israel, because I put my heart and soul into this land, and into the, the Torah and the vision that Moses had for the people that I'm still following, 3,000 land. And I'm doing this not only for my father, my mother, who are no longer here. I'm doing it for my grandfather and my grandmother and my great-grandmother who actually came here in 1925 when my mother was actually born. Yes, before the State of Israel was created in 1948. Yes, and she was a Palestinian. Nice religious Jewish woman. So you wanna, you wanna know history? You wanna know the truth? Learn something closer to the, what, what needs to be heard don't listen too much to the news because it's full of pack of lies. So I wish everyone a good job is here from Maytar and that everyone who wants to learn can learn. And we should all be nice and we should all hope that the hostages should return back to their home and that the world should stop bothering Israel because Israel is their card to success, not to failure. You destroy Israel, you destroy the world because the world was created for Israel to be God's messenger. And if you are a Jew, don't back down against anybody. God will protect you. Don't put yourself in harm's way, but be strong for being a Jew is what God wants you to be as a Jew. Good Shabbos, everyone. From Maytar.